Police stops are an issue that have plagued the U.S. court system for decades. Every aspect of a police stop has been looked over and studied extensively by the courts in order to ride the fine line between safety and constitutional rights. But today we are going to look at just one very simple aspect. Do you need to provide an officer with your name when you are pulled over? As simple as this may sound, the case of Heibel v. the Sixth Judicial Court of Nevada went all the way to the Supreme Court. Humboldt County, Nevada. Police are called in to investigate a possible assault. Sheriff Deputy Lee Dove was dispatched to the scene of the possible crime. Dove, excuse me, sir, can I see some identification? Heibel, why? I have not done anything wrong. Dove, sir, I am investigating a possible crime in this area. Can I please see some identification? Heibel, no, I have done nothing wrong and do not have to show you ID. This went on for some time. After asking Heibel 11 times to show his identification, Officer Dove was frustrated. Dove, Sir, if you do not show me some form of identification, you are under arrest. Heibel, you cannot arrest me. I've done nothing wrong. Dove, sir, you are under arrest for failure to comply with Nevada stop and identify laws. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be provided for you. Heibel, this is bullshit. This violates my Fifth Amendment rights. Mr. Heibel, you are charged with resisting an officer of the law and the jury finds you guilty. You will be fined $250 for your misconduct. This is ridiculous. This is clearly an infringement of my right to silence to avoid self-incrimination according to the Fifth Amendment. Furthermore, this allows for legal Terry stops, the term for stop and frisk based on mere suspicion of the officer in question. This is a clear violation of the basic rights of all U.S. citizens. I must write to the Supreme Court. Heibel did write to the Supreme Court, and they decided to hear his case. The Supreme Court only hears anywhere from 100 to 150 cases per year, despite the fact that 7,000 cases apply. The Supreme Court knew of the importance of this case. Fast forwarding five months to March 22, 2004. The actions taking place by Sheriff Dove were clearly a violation of my client's Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights. There are cases that have set precedents. In the 1979 case, Brown v. Texas, a Texas penal code was tossed out as unconstitutional for giving the police the opportunity to abuse their power. This is nearly an identical situation. Prosecutor. Objection, your honors. The Texas v. Brown case concerned a man who was stopped simply for being in a high crime area. Mr. Heibel was in the area of a reported assault with a potential victim in the vehicle. Sheriff Dove had a more than reasonable suspicion and had a right to a certain Mr. Heibel's name. Three months later, the Supreme Court had finally reached a decision. It has been determined by a narrow majority of five to four that stop and identify laws do not violate someone's fourth or fifth amendment rights. We have determined that the Nevada statute in question is precise and it is not reasonable for Mr. Heibel to assume that giving his name can result in self-incrimination. Furthermore, the stop was based on more than reasonable suspicion, further nullifying the defense's argument that this is a stop and frisk law. Knowing the suspect's name may just as quickly confirm to the officer that the person is wanted for another unrelated crime. In cases such as this, where the police are investigating a domestic dispute, officers need to know who they are dealing with in order to assess the situation, the threat to their own safety, and possible danger to the potential victim. Mr. Heibel was unable to identify a reasonable reason as to why giving his name would cause a violation of his fundamental rights. For the dissenting opinion, there is no reason why the subject of police interrogation based on mere suspicion rather than probable cause should have any lesser protection. We have said that the Fifth Amendment's protections apply with equal force in the context of Terry Stops. The main reason for the dissenters was they believed that similar cases that were tossed for being illegal search and seizures in other states. The sticking point that divided the justice were the circumstances surrounding Heibel's arrest compared to the other cases. However, the court did not go as far as to say all stop and identify laws are constitutional and reserved the ability to review them on a case-by-case -case basis. Therefore, Mr. Heibel was forced to pay his fine of $250.